So there are lots of different decisions you can get, um, but they can broadly be broken down into into these. So uh, the first which uh, you may get, and it's very common actually, is, is, is called uh, desk reject or rejected without review. And this is quite common and it mainly tends to be because the paper is out of scope for the journal you've submitted it to. Uh, or because the paper is not of the quite the quality that journal is looking for. Uh, the decision received by those papers, this is the same decision that you also get if the paper was very poor quality in the first place and if the language and the structure was poor or, or the scientific content was weak. The editor would just simply take the initial uh, review and deem that it wasn't uh, ready uh, or appropriate to send it out to reviewers. Uh, reviewers really don't like being sent papers that they feel the editor should have screened out in the first place. So the editors are very uh, careful and do use this option quite a lot. Uh, if they send reviewers bad papers or papers that, that, that they don't feel are up to the standard of the journal, and they're effectively using that reviewer up um, for maybe, you know, the, they probably only ask each reviewer perhaps once every couple of months. So they're, they're quite cautious about making sure that they don't um, use up the, the limited reviewer pool they may have because we all know it's quite difficult to find reviewers nowadays. So don't be surprised if your paper gets this, but they will always give you a brief comment um, when you get your desk rejection decision back about why this is. It's, it's, it's never just uh, uh, completely um, blade blunt. They, they will always tell you something. And if it's about scope, which it is mostly, and they will often recommend the best journal for you to pass it on to, which is, in, you know, which is important that you, you know, think quite hard before you submit to make sure that you're, you're sending your journal uh, article to the right journal in the first place. So the second decision you can get, um, which is incredibly rare, uh, is, is an accept without review, uh, without revisions, sorry. Everything's always reviewed, but uh, it's an accept without revisions. This is usually when a paper has been commissioned, or it may be something to do with a special issue, or an editorial, or some such things. It's very unlikely that uh, uh, the, the, the original research paper, review article, or such like, will be accepted without, without any revisions. Uh, there's always something they pick up on. So don't be disappointed if you don't get this. So commonly, one of the most common decisions that you will get back is minor revision. So both of the reviewers will have looked at the paper, and they will have picked up on grammar, references, putting things into journal style, etc. It's a minimum, usually contain minimal comments on the actual scientific content of the paper. These minor revisions are best to get done without argument as quickly as possible, because um, it's effectively saying that your paper will be accepted if you make these minor changes. Uh, so do it quickly and send your paper back to the editor so it's fresh in their mind and they can make a, a quick final decision for you. And editors like to get papers like this done and dusted quickly, so it works very well for them, it works well for you. And uh, the, sooner the sooner you reply, the sooner you'll, you'll get your paper published in the journal. And what we're mainly looking at today is what happens when you get um, papers back, uh, reviewer comments back with a major revision. So this is, this is most likely the most likely decision many people will get, especially early in their career, and even late on to the career. You know, many editors I, I work with still doing their research uh, get papers back with major revisions, so it's nothing to be surprised about or upset about. It means basically reviewers see the need for more change within the paper beyond the surface level of grammar, etc. So uh, unfortunately, it's likely to evolve a considerable amount of work on your part. So uh, you really first need to decide if it's worth your while um, to redo the paper or if you wanted to, you know, uh, maybe resubmit somewhere else. But the best advice is to make the effort and, and take on board the comments and, 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 and give it another chance at the journal you, you submitted to in the first place um, rather than ignore all comments and submit it in its original format to a different journal in the hope they won't make the same comments back to you. Which is uh, which we'll come on to a little bit later. Uh, revisions is basically an ideal opportunity for you to take up the free advice you've been given. The reviewers are giving you this advice 
to make your paper better. You know, they've all been through it themselves. So they're generally there to try and help and not, not trying to uh, put you off. So although it may seem quite daunting, you, you, you should make your best, keep, keep positive and, 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 and try and try and make their changes. But again, we'll talk about that more in a minute. And another decision that you know, many people will unfortunately get at some point is, is a rejection. This is you know, after review, which is different to the rejection at desk uh, before review. So uh, it's difficult to say what a typical rejection rate is across all fields. Uh, but I would say um, in the physical sciences and the health sciences, you're looking at about uh, 60 to 70 percent of that total rejection rate. And this includes those papers that are desk rejected. And it's basically where one or both reviewers recommend the paper is rejected. And when only one reviewer rejects and makes that, that recommendation, the ultimate decision is made by the editor. Okay. So that's just a quick overview of the decisions that you may get back. So now we're going to move on to the first steps that you should take once you get your paper back. And you can see, see up there, so keep calm and, and start revising. So first of all, it's stay calm. I've talked to a lot of researchers in my time and editors and reviewers, and they all should say that this is, this is very important. So everyone goes through this, your, your colleagues, your supervisors, your, the editors, the reviewers. And it's important it's how we handle this part is, is, is the important thing. It's, you're bound to feel you know, nervous and uh, maybe a little bit emotional about such things, but you know, it's how you deal with that. And please, whatever you do, don't, don't uh, make any kind of knee-jerk, quick responses to the comments that you may regret later. You know, take your time and, and, and have a little think about it. So it sounds obvious, but the first thing you should do after that is read the comments. Uh, read them thoroughly and, and read every one. Take them all in the context together. And then reread the comments and, 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 and try and get from the comments what the review is actually saying, not what you think they might have said or what you want to hear, but actually what they're trying to get across to you. Because sometimes, you know, we all do it. We have our filters and that, that we sometimes we don't like to read what we see, hear what we're being told. And this is where the next stage is, is very important. You get someone else to read your comments. Obviously, you will have co-authors that can read them, but also colleagues and uh, people you work with, uh, you know, people who are your mentor or, or, or supervisors. And this can be especially helpful if the, if the comments are complicated or if you, you're, you can't quite understand what the, the reviewer is getting at. So, yeah, make the most of the people around you. And they'll give you some moral support as well. And then take a break, let things sink in for a day, have a cup of tea or whatever you prefer to drink, and um, let your head time think, let your head have a rest and digest things, and then come back with a fresh mind and some positivity afterwards. That, and then you'll probably find that you'll, uh, you know, you're, you, if you're feeling a bit angry or cross, you may have calmed down. Okay, and the next step, this is the first kind of practical step, is to make a little table uh, where you can detail every comment of the changes that are required. So I would suggest from comment, uh, comments that I've received from editors about you know, what to include in this presentation, they should make a table with four columns. And in the first column, you just put the number of the comment that the review has made. And then you paraphrase or rewrite the actual comment the, the reviewer has made. And doing this will help you really digest what they're actually saying. You should be doing this for both sets of reviews as well, not just one, one of the reviews. Do this for both sets of comments. And then in the third column, you would put your response in detail. And in the fourth column, uh, put in the page, the line numbers, the figures, the tables, etc., where the point is specifically addressed. And this helps out to break down the specific issues that you have been asked to deal with. And it's especially useful when the reviewer may have made several points together. And not all reviewers will send back an organized, structured set of comments in bullet points. It's often a narrative that you need to break down and, and understand. So we go through to the actual kind of the, the main part now. now. How do you respond to the comments? So what you should do is deal with the minor comments first. 
things such as typos, grammatical errors, putting things into the journal style. And getting these out of the way will allow you to have a clearer picture of what remains to be done. And you can focus on the more important issues. And it gives you a sense of immediate achievement and a bit of a morale boost when you know that you've, uh, you've got, rid you know, got out of the way several comments quite quickly. And then move on to deal with the major comments. This will di differ hugely between different papers in different subject areas and different communities. Um, so we can't really help you on how to deal with the, the comments you get back in specific. Uh, but if you said about addressing the comments that require the most additional work first or have the most knock-on effect to the paper, that's the most sensible option. You may have been asked to run or rerun experiments or, or, or think about things that you hadn't considered at all. So, so start with those things that you think are going to take up the most time. And then begin to draft your response letter. Uh, when you resubmit the paper, you need to have a letter that basically outlines the revisions, revisions you have made and where you've made them in a similar format to perhaps the table that you did to help you work out what revisions needed to be done. And uh, there are three golden rules, basically, for when you respond to the reviewers and the editor. And if you can uh, stick to these, you'll, you'll be in, in good shape. So the first one is, coming up, the first one is be polite. And I'm sure you know you, all the people who are listening to this, you're all nice, polite people. But uh, it goes a long way to be polite and courteous when you're responding. And uh, be thorough, address everything and answer with evidence. So now we'll go to the next set of slides and I'll address each of these three points separately. So, so yeah, reviewers do this for free and uh, you'll be doing it for other people as well. And um, so reviewers take at least two, three hours of their own personal time to do reviews. And they're trying to help you and they've been in this position in the past so it's best to, you know, uh, uh, take take the view that what goes around comes around, and uh, one day you'll be a reviewer, and uh, playing a part in a constructive cycle of communications within your community is a good thing. They may not um, review for your paper again if they're asked if if the comments they 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 receive back from you are, are perceived as as a little bit rude. And um, I'm saying this mainly because a lot of people do feel very um, emotional and sensitive when they get their comments back in the first instance. So you can, you, can be, you can feel that, that's perfectly okay. But in any correspondence, you need to be professional and remove this kind of emotional response and just, and just kind of keep calm, make a, make a good impression. And unfortunately, I've seen some really um, quite um, bad responses to reviewers. And I've seen some very bad reviews as well. And it doesn't really engender good feeling either way just as it wouldn't in any walk of life. So try to keep a proactive approach and you take heed of constructive criticism and it's perceived very well and will help you get your paper accepted in the long run. And if you would disagree with reviewers, you know, being polite and courteous is, is really important here. Um, and be constructive and polite, politely kind of outline why, why you disagree. And we'll talk about how to deal with... Um, these instances when you disagree with what reviewers say uh, later on. And in trying to avoid kind of harsh sweeping statements or, or, or language, don't say, for example, we totally disagree or the reviewer obviously does not understand. The next slide just shows some, some, uh, some sentences that just make things sound a little bit, um, a little bit more um, you know, uh, professional. I mean, I, I work with uh, editors mainly, so I, I have a lot of correspondence with them. And the, you would, it, this being polite may sound uh, common sense, and I'm sure 90% of people are. But it's just, uh, it's also always a little bit surprising when, when you see that some people just don't really follow that basic point. And this is a two way street. You know, communications to you should be polite as well. So. Um, it's not that we think that somehow all authors and getting back to reviewers are, are somehow rude. It's just it's just a very basic kind of courtesy level thing, which just sets everything off on a, on a good level going forward. So I won't go through these useful phrases, and they'll be up on on the campus. But they're just some ideas that you may just of how to phrase things. 
and they're, they're taken from a, a, a different article which I've referenced at the bottom there, which you may also like to read. Okay, so on to the next slide. I talked about being thorough. So when you get your comments back, it's very important that you address every comment that's made. This is fundamental in responding to reviews. And so, yeah, kind of related to that, don't ignore any of the comments. Nothing annoys the reviewers or the editors more than this. It will simply, those comments will simply come back to bite you later. And it can be perceived as slightly disrespectful if, if you get the reviews back and, and you ignore those comments that you, it suits you better to, re, to ignore them. It's much better to have a more constructive way to, uh, to address all the comments, including those you disagree with, and clearly state you know, why you may have not have wished to take certain comments on board rather than ignoring them. And it makes a good impression um, to be thorough as well. It shows you know, you're worth your salt as, a, as, a, as an academic that you're thorough, and it, you know, it reflects well on your, on your, on your work in, in general. And uh, it's very important to be thorough, but also clarity and structure. You know, make sure you, the communication and the letter you write is clear and concise, even though it's thorough. Make sure it's all very logically set out. You know, um, reading some reviewers' comments to you, you may realize that it's a, a bit of a long kind of stream of thought. And so try to avoid having take it doing that when you reply. You know, you reply to a reviewer's comments the way you would like them to have made the comments in the first place. And uh, state exactly what you've done to address each comment and reiterate the reviewer's comments in your answer just to double, just to make it sure that you know, they, they've seen exactly that you've understood what they're saying. And it's very important is to uh, take your time I guess the, the the phrase here is more haste, less speed. It's 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 get on with things. Don't dawdle. Don't procrastinate. But when you're coming to actually writing, you know, your comments back to the reviewers, take your time. It's important. You've put a lot of work into this, and this is the kind of final hurdle. So you'll be given a timeline by which to get back to the journal with your revisions. Some journals, this is as little as five days. Some sometimes it's longer. If you need more time, then communicate this straight away to the editor and tell them why you need more time. It's often uh, unfeasible for you to, to respond to reviewers' comments within timelines, if, depending on the time of year or if co-authors are away or if you have to do, redo some of your work. So as long as you're clear right from the beginning that you need more time, editors are very receptive to this and they appreciate it a lot more than just um, not receiving anything back to you and you receiving numerous reminders. <music>